Um, last weekend was patience. This weekend is gratitude. Um, so please thank you again for your presence. And Imam, over to you. We can't wait to hear what you've prepared for us. May Allah reward your efforts. Amen. Allahumma ameen. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim min nafkhi wa nafthi wa hamzi bismillahi rahman rahim. Alhamdulillahi ladhi bi ni'mati tatimu salihat thumma salatu wa salamu ala sayyidi sadat dalil al-khayrat sayyidi al-awwalin wa al-akhirin imam al-awliyai wa al-muttaqin sayyidi al-abrar wa zayn al-mursalin al-akhiyar wa akram man adlama alayhi al-layl wa ashraq alayhi al-nahar rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani hafqahu qawli Allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammadin al-fatih lima uhliq wa al-khatim lima sabaq nasir al-haq bil-haq wal-hadi ila suratika al-mustaqim wa ala alihi haqqa qadrihi miqdari al-azim wa ba'd So welcome everyone to this session I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our gathering together for his sake in this beautiful month I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to look at us with his eye of mercy and um, and allow us all to exceed all we expect to attain from coming together for his sake and that he makes us look back at these times that we've come together for his sake and makes it the best of our times and make us look back at it with gratitude so last week we spoke about patience um, because we said in the hadith Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi referred to Ramadan as Shahru Sabri, the month of gratitude. Today, sorry, the month of patience. Today we're going to speak about gratitude. Um, why? Because in the Quran, this verse that you can see on your screen here in Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah introduces Ramadan, and he says, the month of Ramadan, Shahr Ramadan is the one which the quran was sent down so the first thing allah speaks about when he mentions ramadan is it's the month of the quran and i hope that we're all trying to have a relationship with the quran in this month that we're all really trying on a regular basis to to connect with the quran on a daily basis okay and then allah says it was sent down as a guidance to mankind with manifest proofs and a guidance and the criterion so Whoever of you witnesses it should fast. And for those who are, who are sick or on a similar on a journey, then they should make it up with a similar number of days. Allah desires ease for you and it does not desire hardship for you. Then Allah said, so that you may complete the number of days. So that you may complete the number and magnify Allah for guiding you and look at the ending so that you may give thanks. So you can see with this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us at least at the very end of Ramadan to be able to have a, an attitude of gratitude. Allah wants gratitude to be ingrained, to be totally within our psyche, right? And it's something that we can achieve, but of course, sometimes we need to really dive deep into what is gratitude, try to understand what it is. And inshallah, in this session, I hope that we can have an at the end of this session, we can have a deeper appreciation of gratitude, shukr, in Islam. In the Quran, Allah declares himself that he will definitely reward the grateful. In Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, Allah says, وَسَيَجِزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ And soon, just to really, for, for those of you who know Arabic, you know, there are two ways of talking about something in the future. You either say sa or sawfa. And you remember that when we say sa, it means that the thing will happen soon. And sawfa is a bit later in the future. So when Allah says here, وَسَيَجِزِ اللَّهُ shakirin, And soon Allah will reward the grateful. I mean, that was enough. If Allah had stopped there, that was enough. This is Surah Al-Imran verse 144. Look at what Allah does in the next verse. Right? Look at what He does in the next verse. And soon we will reward the grateful. Now he didn't say Allah. In the first place, he spoke in the third person, which is from a place of Jalal, from a place of magnificence, right? The second part, he comes closer. And soon we will reward the grateful, right? So why are we learning about gratitude? Allah here is repeating to us often and often, don't worry. What I've got in stock for the, grat for the people of gratitude is immense. And then in another verse, um, in, in Surah Al-Ibrahim, um, chapter 14, verse 7, 
Allah says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ تَأَذَّنَ is to, like you know the adhan, is the same root word as the adhan. The adhan, you shout it, you, you say it loud so that everybody can hear. So here Allah is proclaiming loudly. If you are, and what is Allah proclaiming loudly? If you are grateful, I will surely, without a doubt, increase you, enhance you in blessing. Right? So, you see how important the message is. In the two verses we read just now, he repeated the same message twice. Right? One with a bit more emphasis, we will do this, don't worry about it. If you have gratitude as an attitude, if your gratitude is part of you, you've got what, 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 what Allah has in stock for you is amazing. Right? And then in this other verse, Allah is proclaiming. Right? Allah is calling loudly to everyone who wants to listen that if you show gratitude, we, I will definitely, surely, I will definitely, surely enhance you. And if you notice, I, I want you, to, I don't know whether you guys can see the evolution of the language of Allah here. So here, Allah here is in the third person. Allah will. Here, soon, we. Right is in the first person, but we. But look at this last one. La azid I. Right. I mean, what 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 else do we need as far as what Allah will give to those who are grateful? Here, Allah says, "I will surely," and He uses some really emphatic um, emphatic tools in the Arabic language. The lamb of emphasis, the noon of emphasis for those who know the language. So Allah is saying, "For sure, without." any ounce of doubt Allah rewards those who are grateful so don't we want to know what great gratitude is before we know what gratitude is I want us to look at when in Surah Al-A'raf when Shaytan was expelled from paradise he actually threatened or made a promise to God he threatened mankind and made a promise to God what was his threat he said to God as you have misguided me as you've consigned me to perversity, I will surely lie in wait for them. Who is this them? You and I, the children of Adam, on your straight path. That is, I'm going to wait for them on that path. They're coming to you, right? Yes, I'm going to wait for them. Look at what he said. Then I will come at them from their front. I'm from their rear. I'm from their right. I'm from their left. Now look at the biggest part he says here to Allah. He's promising Allah this and you will not find most of them to be grateful, right? That's Satan's promise to God, that he will, he will misguide us, he will come to us from all directions, he will lie in wait for us, and the consequence, when Shaitan finishes dealing with us, what did he say? You will not find them to be grateful. If there's one thing we can take from today, Let's not make this Satan's promise true about ourselves. Let's not make Shaitan's promise true about ourselves. That we will not end up being people that Shaitan will look at on the day of judgment and say, gotcha. Right? Look at this person. Look at everything Allah has given them. Yet all you hear from them every time you see them is complaint. Right? And you will not find most of them to be grateful. So when we understand this, right? Let's now look into depth as to what is gratitude. Because this, look, if you look at the previous, Shaitan says you won't find most of them to be grateful. What is gratitude? What does it mean to, for someone to be grateful? In my opinion, and you know, from what I've read, from what I've studied, if you do three things, right? If you do three things, you will be someone that is able to show gratitude. The first thing, is to recognize that you're blessed to have the ability to recognize a blessing as a blessing okay that's the first thing because as you're going to see what we're going to go through, through later you're going to find that many a times many of us we're in situations where we're not very we're not too sure whether something is a blessing or not you know we're not we don't have the correct discernment the correct ability to filter through and say mm, is this a blessing or is it not a blessing right and let me give you one one yardstick that you can use anything that draws you closer to allah 
is in reality a blessing. Anything. Right? If the thing makes you run to Allah, right, then in reality it's a blessing. Right? And it's a lesson that you learn from. Anything that diverts you from Allah indeed is a tribulation. Anything, whether it is wealth or children or spouse, anything that diverts you away from Allah is a tribulation. Because sometimes some of us, when we are given blessings, we don't recognize it as blessings. But when we're given tribulations, we think that is a blessing and we it becomes something that actually distances you from Allah. In the Quran, Allah tells us, O oh, you who believe, لا تلهكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم عن ذكر الله ومن يفعل ذلك فأولئك هم الخاسرون Allah says, O oh, you who believe, don't let your children or wealth divert you from the remembrance of Allah. Whoever does that, those are from the losers. So you can see wealth or children can be a means of being a loser if you allow it to divert you from the remembrance of Allah. Okay, so the first thing is recognition. The next thing is connection, which is the ability to connect the blessing back to its source. Okay, to connect the blessing back to its source, where it came from. So you recognize this blessing that this just did not come from nowhere. Okay, and that this blessing came really from God. Okay, and the final thing is to use that blessing, to utilize that blessing in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? To use that blessing in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's look a bit more into these. So with recognition, the first important thing with this is to look at a blessing and to acknowledge it, to really be able to recognize it as a blessing. Right? To look at, and you know, sometimes when we see certain blessings, because we're so blessed, we are not able to understand the hundreds of blessings that came before it. I'll give you a very simple example. All of you now watching this, right? Maybe none of you recognize how blessed you are to have the ability to sit down in a comfortable place and actually watch something. None of you will be in this state if someone had a gun to your head. So if you were not safe and secure, there's no way you're sitting down and watching someone speak. None of you will be in a state like this if you are in complete, if you were ill, if your eyes were not functioning, if you couldn't see or hear, right? None of you would be here if you didn't have a desire to draw closer to Allah, that, that desire itself, it's not something you earned, it's a gift from Allah. The desire to actually want to learn and to actually want to draw closer to Allah, that's a huge gift. Because how many people do you know in your lives that if they were to be given the opportunity to spend their Sunday, the, the Saturday afternoon, right? How many people will choose to do what you're currently doing, right? So we really need to be able to acknowledge blessings. And every blessing, in reality, they are compound in nature, right? The fact that you're able to sit down actually is a blessing, right? There are many people, they wish they're able to sit. They're not able to sit. They're in the bed bound. They can't sit up, right? And so on and so forth. There's so many blessings. Many of you, the equipment that you're using to watch this is worth a lot of money. That amounts that you used to pay just to watch this, others will, will, will you know, they, they would thank Allah for a year if they had just the money to use to buy that equipment, you know, and so on and so forth. So it's very, the ability to be able to recognize blessings, to acknowledge the blessing as a blessing, it's one thing. Then, to understand the worth of the blessing is something that's also very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in trying to give us this, this appreciation. He said, insanu ila Let mankind look at his food. Right? 
Let mankind look at his food. I just cast another glance. Many of times these days, whenever we see food, the first thing we want to do these days, take a picture. But how many of us will actually take one minute of the time to think of how much, just, just, let's, let, let's just think of this. Think of the journey that food took to get to your plate. Just think of the life cycle, the journey it took from the time it took to plant it, the time it took the farmer to harvest it, the sweat and the hard work it took to plant, harvest, plant, you know, and then to pack it, to process, and then to take it to wherever it will be sold. And if it had to then be cooked, the amount of time it took someone to cook it, right? And then all of that time, sometimes it has to be transported from maybe the food you're eating is from another country, it's from another side of town. All of that journey the food took so that you can eat it. And then the first thing you want to do is take a picture rather than just sit down and go, wow, what have I done to deserve this blessing? What, 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 what have I done? What are, yeah, you realize the reality is nothing because other people have done 10 times more than what you've done and they don't have that food, right? And then that should lead you to your heart to melt and go, yeah, Rabb, oh my God, oh my Lord, I'm the one you're blessed with this food. And then, of course, that, you know, understanding the worth of that. Also, if you happen to be in a, in a marriage, you know, many of us, once we get married, we forget the stress and the tiredness and the wahala it took to get married. All the considering this, oh, it doesn't work, oh, it doesn't, no, we're not compatible. And then eventually you found the one. Many of us forget all the stress that it took before that. If you have children, you don't realize what a huge miracle it is for a child to grow inside of you. Do you know how much how, people have spent tens of thousands of pounds just to be able to have one child and they can't, right? Do you know that 30% of marriages, sorry, 30% of pregnancies end up in miscarriages, right? 30%, that's not a small amount, right? Yet you went through all of that and then you have a child. And then that child becomes a healthy child. You don't know how some people, they have children that they have to take to hospitals every day, right? So many of us, we're in the business of not understanding the worth of the blessings that we have. The blessings of being able to see alone. The blessings of being able to listen. The blessing of being able to understand when spoken to. The blessing of being able to respond. All of these are things where, and because we are very, very absent-minded, we're, we're not in a position where we can sit down and go, wow, I have truly been blessed. Allah has given me so much. You know, if you can eat two to three meals a day, you're richer than 70% of people, right? If you have a place to stay, and you can eat two to three meals a day. Do you know how many percent of people in the world right now can't afford that? Right? If you have access to clean water, do you know how many people cannot drink clean water? That clean water is something that it's a fantasy in their mind. Like, how can water be clear? Right? That they'll have to just sieve it and just drink it and, you know, whatever happens, happens. And so on and so forth. So we should really be people understand it's part as part of recognizing the blessing that we understand the worth of what Allah has given us right and then this last part is the parts that you know subhanallah only people that Allah blesses immensely are able to re realize these disguised blessings blessings that look like if they're tribulations blessings that if we didn't go through these tribulations blessings that when they come Will make you cry or they make you stress that and then you go why what right but in reality when you look back at them you go wow thank god that happened to me when it happened to me right and that's why you know because of disguised blessings that's why there was one man right he went to a village and in that village he was he asked um he, um, he asked a scholar in that village and he said he said to the scholar 
um, gratitude, I understand that gratitude is when you're given something, you should, when you're, that to be grateful, to be a grateful person is when you're given something, you show gratitude. And when you're deprived, you are patient. Then the scholar replied and said, <clears throat> He said, that is the religion of our dogs. Okay, he said, our dogs in this village, whenever you give them good food, they wag their tails and they're happy. And whenever you don't give them food, they're patient. They wait until they're given. Right? So that's the dean of our, that's the religion of our dogs. He said, but as for the men of our village, right? When Allah blesses them with something, it makes them humble and shriek and go, oh my God, I've not deserved this. Yes, Allah has given this. And when Allah doesn't give them something, they're grateful for their ability to be patient with Allah. They show gratitude to Allah. And especially sometimes when they ask for something and Allah gives them something else, they thank Allah for their ability to be satisfied with Allah's choice over their own choice. So they thank Allah that, alhamdulillah, that I can be grateful and satisfied with Allah's choice rather than what I would have wanted. Right? So disguised blessings is those type of blessings that you don't know it's a blessing, especially at the time it's coming, because it doesn't come in the normal form of blessings, right? It comes either as something that you see as a tribulation or, ah, stressed, or, ah, you know, what do I have to do, you know? So a truly grateful person is able to recognize all types of blessings in all its forms. Okay, so that is recognition of blessing. Then the second part is connection, to be able to connect the dots together. Okay, to be able to look at a blessing and connect it. Sometimes many of us, if you look at this second line here, many of us, many times when we have a blessing, let's say this is the blessing, and this is the person that Allah uses to give us this blessing. Many people don't even go to this part here. They don't even, if someone gives you something, they don't even thank that person, right? They think, oh, I'm just entitled to it. You know, how many times are we like that with our parents? How many of us have actually gone to our parents and go, thank you so much for what you did to me when I was young. Thank you so much for the education. Thank you so much for the, for the, um, for the education. Thank you so much for the for the food for the raising of for all of the, thank you so how many of us do that right because when we don't do that what eventually happens is we end up being in a situation where we you know when we don't do that we are completely ungrateful not even slightly completely when we don't at least connect it to the first visible source but the true grateful people the true people of Allah they connect it both to the first source and to the original source. Okay? And this is what Allah meant when He said, Whatever blessing you have is from Allah. Okay? Allah does not say that, of course, He's the one that sent whoever it is to give you that money, to give you that job. To, he sent that person. He put that person in that place. But don't forget its original source. These three verses are very interesting verses, and I want us to think about them. Okay, so to Nahl, Allah says, whatever blessing you have is from Allah. Look at this. Then when a distress befalls you, you make, you know, you make entreaties to him. You complain to him. You say, oh, no, Allah didn't treat me well. You know, you forget the blessings you actually had in the first place. Right? You forget that, oh my God, I had all of this in the first place. Okay? So when problems happen, right, when something comes that harms you, then khalas, problem. Okay? So Allah says, whatever blessings you have is from Allah. Then when harm befalls you, it is unto Him you cry for help. Right? And then, look at this. And then when He removes the harm from you, lo, some of you start to ascribe partners to their Lord. So when you don't have anything, right? When you don't have anything, you go, oh God, Baba, God, help us, help us, right? And then when God helps you, some of you go, oh, 
Do you know how much I had to work for this money? Do you know how much stress, how many sleepless nights, how much we did to, I did to, to, to win that contract? Do you know how much I, 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 right? Then you start to do what? You start to ascribe partners to what Allah did, right? You forget the source. You start to say, ah, it's me now, it's me now. In Surah Al-Qasas, what's his name? Harun. He says, Innama utituhu ala ilmin indi. I was given all of this because of my own knowledge. Right? Because of my own knowledge. And what happened to him eventually? He was swallowed by the earth. Then look at this at the end. What did Allah say? Right? Liyakfuru bima ataynahum. Wow, what are they doing here? They're being ungrateful for what we have given them. So let them enjoy. Let them enjoy this for a little bit. Soon they will know. Right? See here, Allah is giving a really, really strong threat to people who are given blessings and then they severe the connection from Allah. You know, Allah gives them something and before they had that thing, they were begging God, please give me God, please give God. If you give me, I'll do it, I'll do it, right? And then God gives them and then afterwards, they, they say, oh, mm -hmm. I, look at me. <laughs> look at my this, look at my that, look at my this. I, 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 I. And forgets that. What's at the beginning of this verse? Whatever blessing you have is from Allah. Okay? Allah is the source of every single blessing that you're, env that you're enveloped with. Right? And this is really something that we should all think deeply about with any blessing that we have. Are we consistently connecting that blessing to its source? There is a connection that is also important. This connection, this first part is important to show gratitude to whoever Allah uses to give you that blessing, right? The hadith says, Man la nas, la Whoever is not grateful to people is not grateful to Allah. So don't, don't some people, when someone gives them money or gives them something, they think that, oh, I can just bypass that person and just go to Allah and just say, Alhamdulillah, I don't need to say thank you to them. That's not showing gratitude to Allah. Because who sent that person to you? Allah. And showing gratitude to that person is part of showing gratitude to Allah. Both go hand in hand. Okay? So this is something that is very important for us all. We must all be in a position where whatever blessing that we have, whether it's a blessing of free time, whether it's the blessing of free will, whether it's a blessing of good health, whether it's a blessing of faith, whether it's the blessing of being a Muslim and being someone that Allah has blessed to be able to practice some of what you know, right? Whatever blessing that you have is from Allah. Your ability to practice what you know is not from yourself. Because if Allah were to leave you to yourself, Shaitan would deal with you, right? I always say to people, if you see the CV of Shaitan, if you see the kind of people he has led astray, you would realize, oh my God, that your protection is completely from Allah, right? If you see the caliber of people that shaitan has led astray, you'd realize that the fact that you're being guided is completely a blessing from Allah, right? Even shaitan himself, look at him. He was someone that used to teach angels. And then he became someone that everybody curses every day, right? So. Connection is very, it's an important pillar when it comes to being a grateful person. Once you've recognized the blessing, you need to be able to connect it back to its source. And that connection, it, it's a way that will actually help you to remove pride from that blessing, to remove arrogance from that blessing, right? And it's the first step and it would lead you to what we're going to go through next, right? Which is to use that blessing in a way that is pleasing to Allah, okay? You use that blessing in a way that the source of that blessing will look at it and go, wow, my servant is using this blessing in a way that's pleasing. Also, this also applies to if someone gives you money, right? You so like this is a way that some people might not realize. Let's say someone you are you are in need of money and someone gives you money. If out of the money that someone gives you, you can help that person multiply 
their reward by taking a little bit out of what you've been given and giving others that money as well. So that person, like, let's say they gave you, just let's say give you 1,000 Naira. You go, and on your way, you see someone needy, you give them 100 or 200 Naira. You have helped that person, the first person that gave you, to multiply their blessing. Because when they gave it to you, they didn't intend to give the other person. But you have helped their money to go even further. Right? So that's one way of doing it. Of course, eventually, is to use the blessing in a way that is pleasing to Allah. In a way that Allah would look at you and be happy. And you're using it in a way that Allah will be pleased with. Not in a way to disobey Allah. Because many of us, can you imagine all the blessing that Allah has given us? The blessing of good health. And then we take that good health and we destroy it with cigarettes. We take that good health and we destroy it with alcohol. We take that good health and we destroy it with drugs. Okay? Look at the blessing of good health. You take that good health and you use it to just watch television and just waste your time. You take that good health and you use it to call someone to backbite for the next 20 minutes, to start talking evil about people. Imagine the real, imagine people in their graves, how they'll be looking at you. They don't have that time anymore. They don't have the good health anymore. While well, you have that for a very limited amount of time, and this is how you choose to use it. Imagine a month as blessed as Ramadan. Imagine an opportunity where all the gates of hellfire are closed. All the gates of paradise are open. And what is the servant of God doing in that time? He's watching TV. He's scrolling through his phone. He's watching a football match. He's, you know, he's using that time in a way that is an absolute waste of time, that it will bear him no consequence in the hereafter. Right? Or worse still, he's using that time to sin. Right? So that's, that's, a, that's a, this, this is Ainul Kufur. This is the essence of ingratitude. You know the word kafir, kufr, is from the same, is the opposite of shukr, is the opposite of gratitude. Right? To reject God is the essence of ingratitude. To reject the source of all of these blessings or to say it's not him alone, it's him and someone else is the essence of ingratitude, right? So using whatever blessing that Allah has given you in a way that is pleasing to him, in a way that he would look at you and go, yes, this is how I want my servant to be, right? And look, <laughs> if you don't know what that is, you can actually ask yourself that question. How do I show gratitude with this blessing? How do I this blessing and honestly all of you in this session now you've been given free time and alhamdulillah 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 that you have chosen to use that time to learn something that you hope will bring you closer to allah that's one of the best ways to use your time right and so what, another way to use your time is to serve others serve others with what you have Right? So if you keep asking yourself this question, how do I show gratitude with this blessing? 80 out of 100 times, you will come to the right answer. And if you make it a, if you make it a habit of asking yourself this question regularly, then it will become part and parcel of you to be someone that, you know, it, it, gratitude is a habit for that person and you are and, and it also needs people who are able to be present in the moment to be able to if we go back to what we mentioned earlier to be able to understand the worth of every blessing you need to be present at every moment you need to be able to look at where you are wait, ah she me no long she is it me that allah has done this for well, you know all of this this i am the one like for the past how many days i've not been ill or for the past how I many hours I've not been ill, right? Some of us don't understand the blessing of good health until they're ill. They don't realize how amazing it is 
not to have any part of your body that hurts right not to have any and when you have you're in that state what do you decide to go and do with that full body you go and sin you go to a place of sin you go to a place where god is not remembered yeah you know so but if you make it a habit to keep asking yourself how do i show gratitude with this right how do i you right how do i make sure that with this blessing that allah has given me that i am showing gratitude that i am using this blessing in a way that allah loves okay and just as a practical thing for all of us that we can use all of us can use either these two steps that we're going to mention now or these two procedures that we're going to mention right or some of us will use one or the other regarding anything you have with your free time learn something learn something that's useful learn a skill that makes life easier or that makes your journey to allah better practice whatever it is you've learned practice it over time till you become someone good at it and then teach it right if you do this with most things you will be given who you'll be showing gratitude with it with your free time go and learn something educate yourself right and practice that thing be good at it and once you once you've reached a level of proficiency in that thing teach it to others help others in that journey this is something we can all try to do right if all of us were to look at the amount of time we spend on television or we spend on you know look at your social media look at your screen time right and look i always say to people look at the top three apps that you spend your time on and ask yourself which of these three apps will help me when i stand in front of allah right which of these three apps will really draw me closer to allah if there are none of them then take one of them look at the amount of time you're spending on just one of them okay one of the top three and say to yourself you know for a fact that you have that time that's a fact it's not it's, your phone has shown you you definitely have that time now i'm going to replace one of these three with something else that i'm going to go and learn practice and teach whether it is the arabic language whether it is the quran whether it is fiqh whether it is you know any skill right whether it is a skill you know um, you know project management you know whatever it is whatever skill it is that you know can help people either in their dunya or in their akhirah okay i'm going to use this time and rechannel one of these three top apps that has no no relevance to my hereafter or does it, and many many times you find that these top three things don't even have a relevance to your dunya as well they are not even helping you in your worldly life okay so learn with your time practice whatever you learn and teach it another way that we can also take and, and really try to use is earn many of us alhamdulillah are able to earn and earn a living when you earn give when you earn give okay and give regularly such that you live by giving right your living is a you know you you your, your living is totally around showing gratitude you live in such a way that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would look at you and use you to boast to the angels that look you guys said that they're going to sow corruption in the earth look at what this one is doing all he almost everything he earns he uses it to serve me right or at least a huge proportion of what he earns he uses it to help other people he goes and looks for people of allah and he gives them money so that they be he knows that these people of allah would spend that money in a way that's pleasing to allah right he lives in such a way that so many people have said alhamdulillah because of him you know be the reason why someone says alhamdulillah thank god ah thank god ah thank god be that reason 
right? And if we do all of these things, brothers and sisters, we will be people that utilize our blessings in a way that is pleasing to Allah. Okay? We should live with gratitude. Okay? And of course, finally, we should all try to eventually inculcate an attitude of gratitude, starting with yourself. Okay, starting with yourself. How do you start with yourself? Look at yourself. I want to ask all of you, okay, how much did you guys pay for your eyes? I'm not talking of those with four eyes or the expensive glasses. I'm talking of just those two eyes first. How much did you pay for your eyes? What about your ears? How much did you pay for it? What about those breaths? How much did you, did you pay for per breath? Right? Imagine if that breath was taken away from you for the next three minutes. How would you live? How much did you pay for your respiratory system? The whole system that takes in oxygen and brings out carbon dioxide. How, how much? How much did you pay for your digestive system? How much did you pay for all those atoms in your body, for all your cells? How much did you pay per cell? Right? How much did you pay for your hands, for your limbs? How much did you pay for everything functioning that you don't even know how they're functioning? When you put food in your mouth, how, how much did you push that food that it ended up somehow in your stomach? What instruction did you give to the enzymes in the stomach? Right? So there is so much within yourself that if you ponder about, you will be someone that is extremely grateful to Allah. Right? Let man look at his own self. Let him consider his own self. Allah says in the Quran, we will show them our signs. Sanurihim ayatina fil afaq. We'll show them our signs in the horizons. Wa fi anfusihim. And in their own selves until it becomes very clear to him that it's the truth within yourself there are enough signs that will make you know allah that will give you a real attitude of gratitude right you know just all of you none of you will be here if you didn't sleep and wake up that waking up itself right the ability to wake up how many people wish they are able to wake up and they're not that's the end they're in a coma how many people have been in coma for weeks, months, years in some cases? Right? I mean, Allah, for all of those who are ill, we ask Allah to give them good health. We we'll ask Allah to wake those people in a coma up, to wake them up, um, and, and to give them good health after they've been woken up. So within yourself, there's a lot, a lot to consider. Show gratitude with others. This is in many places. Number one, with others that are sources of blessings for you right with your wife starting with your spouses right with your spouse or with your wife or with your husband do you show gratitude to them are you grateful for what they stand for in your life with your parents do you show gratitude to your parents right many mothers many many women immediately after they have their first children the first person they call within the first few hours or within the first few days, they call their mother and they recognize that, mom, how did you go through all of this? Especially those who have multiple siblings, many children. And they go, how did my mom do all of this? How? Right? So showing gratitude with others is something that's really important. Right? That you recognize their worth in your lives. You recognize that when people do good to you, you show gratitude to them. You humble yourselves in their, in their presence. Okay? And, of course, I've already said, you know, we started this with showing gratitude to Allah. Within yourself and with others, recognize that all of these blessings came from Allah. And what do you want to really end up with? You need to make gratitude a habit you need to try to and for some of you let me give you a, a very simple thing you can all do set three alarms on your phone start with three alarms on your phone 
and put it put the title of the alarm show gratitude right and when the alarm comes stop it or snooze it and for the next minute at least try to think of how you can use this minute to show gratitude the least you can say is alhamdulillah rabbil alamin all praise be to allah all pay all praise belongs to allah the lord of the world and another thing you can do is maybe you think about someone that doesn't have as much as you do and show gratitude by giving them something in that moment honestly no matter how little but at least you're showing gratitude right make it a habit that you do regularly so those three alarms set it every day <clears throat> Or if you don't want something to disturb you, if you call it disturbance, then set something in the morning and in the evening. First thing when you wake up, show gratitude. Before you sleep, show gratitude. Right? For all of us, we need to make gratitude a habit. We need to be people that really Allah would look at and say, these are my grateful servants. Right? When Allah praised Nuh, Allah says, Inna hu kana abdan shakura. He was a really extremely grateful servant. Shakur is where the gratitude is already a habit. You do it every time. When you wake up, when you eat, you know, when you drink, when you wear clothes, when you all of these things you show gratitude for. <clears throat> There's a dua you make when you finish eating. Alhamdulillah, ladi ata'amana. Thanks be to Allah that granted that, that fed us wasakana and gave us to drink and make us of those who surrender to him. There's a dua you make when you wear clothes, new clothes. Alhamdulillah. Thanks be to Allah that gave me this to wear, that clothed me with this. Right? There are du'as you make when you get so make gratitude a habit, something that it just automatically flows out of your mouth. Take time on a daily basis to relax, to, 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 you know, to, re to, be re to be introspective, to look deep within and say, have I really shown enough gratitude? Another thing you can do is write, I want to try this on a daily basis. Before you sleep, write down things you are grateful for for that day. Right? Write down things you're grateful for for that day and see how many you can list, right? In fact, one thing you should write, when you're writing down your list of great things to be grateful for, the, what you should start with or end with is the ability to recognize the blessing as a blessing. That itself is, is, a, is a blessing. The ability to recognize the blessing is a blessing. Because many people, they have that blessing, they just think, ah, oh, Shikina is normal now, right? They just think, ah, oh, you know, I have this, um, I, that's, I was born with a silver spoon, this is how life is, you know, um, the things are supposed to be like this, right? So the fact that you can recognize the blessing is a blessing itself. So when you're writing down your list of things you're grateful for, write that down with it, right? Be grateful for the things you didn't ask for that Allah gave you. Be grateful for the things you asked for that Allah gave you. Be grateful for the things you asked for that Allah didn't give you because he knew it would have destroyed you. Right? In the Quran, Allah says, وَيَدْعُ الْإِنسَانُ بِالشَّرِّ دُعَاءَهُ بِالْخَيْرِ Mankind prays for evil with the same fervent nature as they pray for good. Imagine. Someone is, sometimes, I'll give you a very easy example. Like somebody who wants to marry a particular brother or sister. But Allah knows for a fact that them marrying that brother or sister, perhaps a pious brother or a pious sister, a good brother or a good sister, but, but Allah knows that their combination could lead that person to the worst of situation. Two people can be good people, but they won't make a good match. Okay? So sometimes you pray so much for, oh, Lord, please let me marry that person. Please let me marry that person. Please, 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 please. And then it doesn't work. And then you cry. And then you don't go out for three days. And then, you, you know, you, 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 everything is wrong from then on. 
right? And then maybe in three years' time, or God knows how long, Allah now blesses you with someone. And then you recognize, oh my God, this is what I really need. And if I had married this other person, goodness me, how would what would that have led to? Or three years later, you realize, and I've seen this in some people, right? That that person's direction in life has completely changed, right? Or you might not even see what Allah is protecting you from. But as people of Iman, you know that Allah will never, ever deprive you of something that is the best for you in this world and in the hereafter. Hashalillah. It's not for Allah that he will deprive you of something that is actually the best thing for you in this world and the hereafter. It is you yourself that would deprive yourself of something like that by thinking you know better. Okay? So let's make an attitude of gratitude within ourselves, with others, and let's make this something that is a habit for us all. Okay? So that's really all I wanted to share in this session. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us people who hear something and take the best of it. And may Allah make this session a means by which we all are really recharged. Because Ramadan is a time that's supposed to make us people that are, Allah, you see, as we read in, the, in, the, in, the, in that verse, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that we may show gratitude. Ramadan is supposed to make you realize that, wow, Allah has given me so much, right? Allah has given me so much. This, your fasting, that is the norm for many people. Like, not eating like that is the norm for them. And not because of choice. It's because they have no choice. That's what they have to do. And not knowing when they're going to have their next meal come from. But with you, you know you're going to have iftar now. And not just iftar, you know if the iftar is not something that is, you know, khalas, trouble will come. Right? So, really, Ramadan, if done well, it would lead us to real gratitude. It would lead us to complete gratitude and complete reliance on Allah. Right? You will find yourself doing things you didn't even realize you had the ability to do. You find yourself, you know, so many things that you'll learn from Ramadan. So I pray to Allah that he makes us the people that hear something and take the best of it. May Allah look at us with the eye of mercy. May Allah give us an attitude of gratitude. May Allah make us of those who are grateful. May Allah make us of those who are grateful. One day, Umar bin Khattab, he saw a man making dua, saying, Allahumma ja'alni min al-qaleel. Allahumma ja'alni min al-qaleel. Allahumma ja'alni min al-qaleel. Oh Allah, make me of the little. Make me of the few. Oh Allah, make me of the few. Make me of the few. And Omar said, what kind of du'a is this? What are, you, what are you saying? He called him and said, what are you saying? What kind of du'a is this? And the man said, have you not heard Allah's verse when Allah said, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ And only a few of my servants are completely, extremely grateful. So I'm asking to be of those few. May Allah make us all that we're in this gathering. And those that listen to this afterwards, may Allah make us of those few. May Allah make us of those few that are truly, truly grateful and are not oblivious to any of his blessings. And that gratitude, may it lead us to be of the best of submitters to Allah. May it lead us to be of the best of Muslims and of the best of people of Ihsan. And may Allah make us people who hear something and take the best of it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shirun la ilaha lanta sakhfik wa tubi lake. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzata amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Now it's time for questions. Oh, okay, they just like. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the time, the effort, the knowledge that you put into this. We really appreciate all the effort. I mean, Allah, may Allah reward you for all your efforts. Um, so I think you know, for questions, if you wanted to, you can type questions in the chat. You can um if you want to, you can raise your hand if you wanted to maybe speak or ask ask Imam directly. Um, I think it's it's up to you. Um, as I was listening to 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 your to your talk um i think one of the things that always gets me during ramadan is i think we don't realize how close like if you don't eat for one day like we're only a few meals away from like completely breaking down and just not being able to like exist and live so um just 
that framing and that reference is just another reason to be grateful. So again, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to check the chat to see if there's anybody with any questions, but please, we encourage you to either tap your questions in the chat or, you know, raise your hand and, and um, you know, you can you can ask your mom directly. Um, there, there was a part where you said, I think the kufr and, like, I think the root words are the same. Do you... Okay, we have a question. I was, gonna, I was just going to start off, but I think maybe Ibrahim has his hand raised up, so we'll let him come on. And Ibrahim, please, if you are if you are able to, please can you unmute your mic? Oh, my grand check. <laughs> <laughs> okay. like, yeah. So welcome. This is my old girl. So I'm uh, I love you so much. Um, I love you for. I love you, Habibi. Thank you for um, the. The reminder, I think I want to start like the learnings from this session by showing gratitude to you for always being available for for the session. I was talking to like one of the imams that you know comes for the Tahara session recently, and and he made me realize that when people are invited to 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 give these lectures. There is an assumption that the time that you're giving is the one hour, the two hours that you would be speaking. But in reality, like what is being asked for is like six hours of your time because you have to spend four hours pre preparing for the sessions, right? Mm -hmm. And that never really truly acknowledged, you know. Um, so I would just thank you for 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 that, Amela. You know, count it amongst your good dates and continue to increase. You know, that is beneficial for you. Oh my God. Um, oh my thank God. you for thank you for the reminder. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. And um, this is yeah. You, you, all all the good that you see is just because I'm a mirror. As Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Al Mu'min Mirat Al Mu'min." They're all from your good opinion and your and your and your and your goodness. May Allah continue to increase you in all that's good. Thank you, Ibrahim. Um, if anybody else also has any comments or just wanted to speak, please raise your hands, ask any questions. You can also type in the chat. Okay, we have um Mashud. Yes, Sheikh Mashud, please. Could you? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'll follow in a brand for stuff and thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure gratitude to you for actually giving us this lecture. I, I wanted to ask, yeah. and maybe I probably already know the answer, but maybe you could um, illuminate on that. Um, if you persistently give someone something, whatever it is, knowledge, money, and they don't show gratitude, and obviously, as you said, and I've heard that before, obviously, if you don't show gratitude to somebody, it's like you've not shown gratitude to Allah. Do you continue giving them or showing them that um, thing, uh, especially since it feels like, you know, they are not showing gratitude and they are not honoring that um, idea or attitude or gratitude? Or do you just continue because, you know, obviously you're doing it for Allah? How, how do you deal with that? Because it almost feels like a bit of a cognitive dissonance, as I call it. Um... In your question, you've answered your question, but I'm just going to put a microscope on that phrase you, you did. Um, so you, the phrase I'm just going to put a microscope on and emphasize is you're doing it for Allah. Okay. So I'm going to put a microscope on that phrase, doing it for Allah. What does it mean to do it for Allah? Um, when you do something for Allah, whose vision are you concerned about? Allah. Whose knowledge are you interested in? Allah. Whose acknowledgement are you interested in? Allah. Okay? So, if you're doing it for Allah, that's your prerogative. You are interested in what Allah wants and what Allah is in, what, what, Allah, um, what Allah will give you from this. Um, I want you to maybe look at one verse of the Quran together. Um, and I, I think it will be nice if we actually read it together, um, you know. Um, and and it, it's 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 something that um, it's something that 
I think we can learn from if we read this together. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Let me know when you can see my screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay. So look at this verse in Surah Al-Insan. Allah says about people, describing a group of people, He says, ala miskinan wa wa They give food for the love of Him to the needy, the orphan, and the prisoner. Now look at this. This is the part I want you to, 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 um, to hone on in your, to answer your question. We feed you only for the sake of Allah. We actually do not want any reward from you or any thank you from you. So this is the definition of giving for Allah. You do it out of love for Allah to those who are poor, to those orphans and those who are prisoners, or basically people who can't afford it. Okay, and you do it only for Allah, right? For the sake of Allah. And the sign that is done for the sake of Allah is this you do not expect any thank you or any reward or any action from that person. In fact, some scholars will say. The moment you start to expect something from that person, it reduces your reward with Allah, right? And the moment where you are so expectant of that, to the extent that you don't actually then give that person anymore because they show ingratitude, then you are only giving them in the first place for their gratitude, okay? So you're no longer doing it now for Allah because Allah is still there, okay? Allah is still there, right? So, and Allah still sees, Allah still knows, okay? Let me give you another example to even make this hone in more, okay? If we look at Suratul Nur, if we look at Suratul Nur, verse 22, okay? If you look at Suratul Nur, verse 22, look at this. Allah, no, not that's that one, this one, okay? Let, the context of this verse was that Abu Bakr, he had somebody who he used to spend money on regularly. He was a relative of his, distant relative, who, you know, Abu Bakr, he relied on Abu Bakr for his sustenance. Then there was a time when a rumor started spreading around about Abu Bakr's daughter, Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, our mother. And this guy that Abu Bakr used to spend money on was one of those that was spreading these rumors. So not only is this person not grateful, he's actually using the good health that Abu Bakr is given, you know, that he's able to afford, and the, the, the energy that he got from the food that he bought with Abu Bakr's money He's using that energy to go and slander Abu Bakr's daughter. Abu Bakr, being a human like many of us, he said, I'm not going to spend a penny on this guy anymore. And Allah, being the most merciful of those who show mercy, Allah, this is so, this is so, if, if you really can taste this verse, this is really, 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 it touches the heart. Allah revealed this verse in defense of a slanderer, not defense, to, to alleviate the suffering of someone who slandered the mother of the believers. And Allah sent this verse to Abu Bakr. And what did Allah say to the Prophet? Allah sent this verse regarding Abu Bakr. Allah says, let the well-off and the opulence, the rich amongst you, let them not vow not to give to the relatives and the needy and those who have migrated in the way of Allah. Look at what Allah says. Let them excuse and forbear. Let them what? Excuse. Make excuses for the person. And do what? And forbear whatever harm comes from them. Now, look at, the, look at this question that Allah asks here. Please, how many of you will not say yes to this question? Do you not love that Allah should forgive you? That is, you, look at yourself. Look at how many things Allah gives you. And of all of those things that Allah gives you, how many of those things are you grateful for? 
do you use all of those things in a way that's pleasing to Allah? Imagine that day that Allah caught you sinning with his breath that he gave you, with his life that he gave you, with the good health that he gave you. Should he take all of them away from you because he caught you sinning for 10 minutes or an hour? Or some people even days, some people even years of sinning because they regard disregard one of Allah's injunctions to them. Right? So look at that. Allah is saying, do you not want Allah himself to forgive you? And Allah is extremely forgiven and extremely merciful. So I hope that has answered your question that the reality is we all of us, without a doubt, all of us, right? If Allah were to deal with us based on how much gratitude we show, he would take everything back straight away. Everything, right? So it's best for us all to try what ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk. Show excellence as Allah has shown you excellence and Allah knows best. Alhamdulillah, thank you for that. Actually, if I can, on within the same thread, ask, push a little bit further. What if it's a scenario where you know the person is possibly using this money or these resources not just to harm people, but to, let's say theoretically, um, you know, they're gambling, they're doing all these type of things and before you used to give it to them, but now you're in a situation where you've heard that, oh, you know, this is what this person, why, this is why this person is in so much debt. How do you resolve that? Is it, do you, is it okay to say, well, you know, it's between me and Allah, Allah does, uh, you know, as Allah pleases, and you know, I'll still give, or is it in that scenario okay to say, well, okay, this person might be using this to harm, can I pull back some of, just, I'd love to know your thinking on that. Thank you. No, it's not my thinking, please, my guy. Oh, the thinking. My thinking. Let's go. Let's go to the Quran. <laughs> let's go to the Quran. Okay. Well, right. Can you see this verse, verse five of Surah Al Nisa? Yes. Allah says, "You are. It's haram for you to give money to people who, who don't have sound intellect. Do not give. Do not give the feeble-minded your property, your wealth that Allah has assigned for you to manage. What did so Allah says? Don't give." Don't, so, for example, if you know someone is the word for this sufaha, right? It can be also translated as a foolish person, a weak minded, a feeble minded, someone who is not in complete control of their intellect, right? Don't give such a person money that you know they're going to potentially use to harm themselves. But Allah says, look, Allah says, warzuquhum fiha, give them. Provide for them. So, for example, if you know you see a drug addict, right? Don't give them money. Give them food to eat, right? Give them food to eat. Provide for them. Waksuhum, and clothe them, right? And speak. Look at this. Look at this. And speak to them in an honourable way, right? The, who are what? Who are these people that Allah is asking you to do this for? Foolish people. Weak-minded people, feeble-minded people, right? People who are not in best control of the intellect. So this is how Allah has asked us to deal with people like that. That don't give such a person. So for example, I love my daughter, right? My, I, I love my daughters, right? I can't go to my six-year-old daughter and say, here, there you go, that's 100 pounds. She will most likely color it and paint it, <laughs> right? Or use it and tear it into different places and, you know, make a toy out of it. Or make holes through it and design, you know. Right? So you're not, it's not permissible for you to give to people who are like that. I hope that answered your question. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Um, okay, Latifa, I think your hand is up. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Um, alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. as always. I thoroughly enjoyed it. My question mm -hmm. is somehow related to what um, Mashud asked. And mine is about, or oh, I've heard this from one of my friends that was saying that um, we would, we should rather give alms to say beggars or the vulnerable people that are disabled or don't have maybe complete body parts or something and not those that are full bodied and do not have any form of disability. And I just want some sort of clarification on that. 
or should we just give and just leave the intention <laughs> with, to allow to decide? It's, it's, when, people, when people say this, it's very painful. Why? Because when you consider how much Allah gives them, I want to ask you a question, um, just you personally a question. Do you spend every single penny that Allah has given you in a way that's pleasing to him? Not entirely. I don't think there's any one of us that does that, right? So do you think Allah should, do you think before Allah gave you that money, did he know what you're going to do with it? Yes or no? Not at all. Allah, of course Allah knew. Forget, he knew forget. everything you were going to do with the money before he gave it to you. Your health, you have your good health. Do you use your good health every single time in a way that's pleasing to God? Every time? Not every time. No, if you did, you'd be a saint. As the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, if you did, you'd be shaking angels on the streets. Right? But Allah that gave you the good health. Do you think he didn't know what you're going to do with it before giving you the good health? Of course he knows, right? So Allah, he deals with us in this way. We should try to emulate that generosity that we give people, whether they're able-bodied or not. Because may Allah not test you with what he has tested these able-bodied people with that being able-bodied yet relying on others right may allah not test you with what he's tested them with perhaps if it did you will be in the same or worse situation okay so it's important that when you deal with others look at the quranic verse wa ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk, which is in surah al-qasas show excellence as allah has shown excellence to you i hope that answered your question Yes, uh, but the reason why I was asking was in um, context what did you were saying. Because you don't know what they use this money for. For example, you give them, and only Allah knows if they use this money to gamble or to lie or to do something. That's like the reason why. I was in asking. that case, when you don't know, you're supposed to have a good opinion. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us to seek how many excuses for our brothers? Seventy. You could take that same mindset and say, ah, maybe there's someone that just pushed this. Um, disabled person there, right? Uh, right? So maybe there's someone that just pushed this disabled person there. Um, and because of that, um, can I don't know who allowed Jim. Oh, someone is showing this in the uh, verse in the Quran. But anyway, um, maybe there's someone that just put this person, this disabled person there. And as a result of putting that disabled person there, um, that's why, um, that's why, you know, you can start thinking of many things. And say, oh, that disabled person, maybe someone is putting them there and then someone is taking their money from them. What you should do is have a good opinion of people. Have, make excuses for them. And make, it, make 70. Once you've made 70 and you're done with 70, then stop giving. I'm not saying 70 in total for all of them. 70 per person. Okay? So when you see someone, make excuse for them the first time. Give. When you see them again, make excuse again, give. If you've made 70 and then you feel like stop giving, then maybe you've done your bit. Okay? But make excuses for people when you see them ask for money. And give with grace. You know, because you too, you ask God for blessings, don't you, right? And thank you, thank you very much for that comment. Not all disabilities are visible, right? Not all tests are also visible, right? Someone might look able-minded and sane and everything but you don't know what they've had to go through in life things that if you had gone through you probably might be dead by now right so that's may Allah make it easier for us i hope that's answered your question yes sir it did thank you so much Alhamdulillah. any more questions um i'm checking the chat i cannot see Anything anybody wants to raise their hand, make any comments? Please feel free. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. Okay, Barakat Shuai. Um, could you please unmute yourself, Barakat, and uh, ask? 
Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sorry, I joined a bit late, but my question is, I know that one of the um, best ways to show gratitude in Islam is saying alhamdulillah, but is there any other um, um, ways to show gratitude apart from saying alhamdulillah that we can um, emulate or, yeah, thank you. So, so that's, I'm going to be nice and reshow that part of the presentation. Normally, because being a teacher, whenever someone misses a part that I've shown, I always say to them, um, go back to the recording. But I'll just quickly summarize. So we said gratitude is to recognize the blessing, connect the blessing to Allah, and utilize the blessing in a way that's pleasing to Allah. In recognizing the blessing, acknowledge that the blessing is a blessing, because to be able to recognize the blessing, know that it's a blessing, take time to understand the worth of that blessing. You know, know its worth know what it means in reality and there are some blessings that are disguised that you don't even know it's a blessing take time to unroot these you know to get to the bottom of these and recognize these as blessings too and we said what is a blessing anything that draws you closer to allah eventually is a blessing connection whenever you have that blessing connect it to allah so by saying alhamdulillah you are connecting it to allah because you're remembering allah with it but connecting it to allah is also connecting it with the source that allah used to bring it to you right so you connect that blessing back to allah and you, you also show gratitude to the person that gave you that particular blessing or the one person that allah used as a means of providing that blessing to you and then we said you use that blessing in a way that's pleasing to its source. so this connection is the point of alhamdulillah you know when you're connected to allah you say alhamdulillah and you use that blessing in a way that's pleasing to its source you use that blessing, whatever Allah has given you, in a way that's pleasing to Allah. Whoever Allah uses to bless you, you make their money go further than what they expect, right? You should always ask yourself, how do I show bless? How do I show gratitude with this blessing? Ask yourself that question regularly, right? With your free time, learn something, practice it, teach it. That's showing gratitude. Earn money, give a lot of that money for the sake of Allah, and live in a way that makes it. A way, a way that it's pleasing to Allah, right? With whatever you earn, you know, use that money in yourself in a way that it's pleasing to Allah. This living, some people, are, Prophet Muhammad said that Allah loves that he sees the signs of his blessings on his servants, right? So if you're someone that Allah has blessed with wealth, Allah loves to see that blessing on you, right? So, but of course, give. As you know, that, that's why I put given first before living with whatever it is that Allah has given. So I mentioned that, and then of course, show gratitude with yourself, with others, and make gratitude a habit. So, in all, Alhamdulillah is the first thing you do. But all of these other things that we mentioned are things that you add on top of it. So you have a wholesome attitude of gratitude. Alhamdulillah, thank you. Mutiat um, Adeyamor, please feel free to ask a question. Uh, As alaikum, thank you for the. Wa alaikum as So, the question that I have is sort of about, you know, when giving. I mean, you'd mention obviously that the best way to give, obviously, is to do it for the sake of Allah, not to get thanks from anyone and, and i think that's 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 something you, i think people can actually get done but there's something that i think i struggle with sometimes and that's you know when you give out especially when you feel like you were especially generous or you feel like you were more generous than many people around you maybe for example maybe during friday uh jumat and maybe you can kind of see that you were you kind of give more than usual i feel like there's this sort of feeling of pride of arrogance so it's not like you're you're not declaring to the public you're not telling anyone but it still feels like like a bad thought like that it's i don't know i can't explain it but it feels like it kind of like it diminishes the goodness that you've done because of that feeling of betterness that you sort of had in giving i i, I don't know if you ever felt this or if you have any thought. No, I understand what you're trying to say. So this is a disease of the heart that, you know, a disease of the heart. So it, let, let's start from scratch. When we said about a blessing, we said you have to be able to recognize it and 
connect it to its source. So let me ask you a question. If I give you 100 pounds, okay? And I said, here you go, that's 100 pounds. And out of this 100 pounds, I want you to go and give this 100 pounds. Uh, I want you to make this 100 pounds count in the best way. When you start spending this 100 pounds and start giving other people, do you feel do you feel that same sense that you've just spoken about now? Do you think you'll feel that just out of interest? Uh, probably not. Why? Because it's not necessarily my money. I'll just like an errand. Thank you. You've hit the nail on the head. The money you have, who told you is your money in the first place? Al-malu malu Allahi. The wealth belongs to Allah in reality. Look at everything you, you needed to earn that money. How much did you pay for your eyes? How much did you pay for your lungs? How much did you pay for your ability to speak? How much did you pay for your good health? How much did you pay for your breaths? Right? How much did you pay for all of these things? That without it, you wouldn't have been able to earn a penny. Right? So when you realize that all of this is really from Allah, then your behavior will be exactly the same way as if I had given you, you spending it, it's not yours in the first place. That's why, you know, I, I really feel it's very ironic in the Quran when Allah says, who will loan Allah a good loan? Like Allah is giving you the money in the first place. And then he's saying to you, give it for my, spend it for my sake, and then I'll return it back to you in millions of, you know, in, in so many thousands of folks, hundreds of folks, right? So it's a very ironic thing. Imagine um, you give your child 100 pounds and then the child says, oh, um, there you go. He gives you 10 pounds. He spends 10 pounds in a way that you know he likes. He knows that you like, right? Or he spends 10 pounds to buy you something that he knows that you like. And then because of that 10 pounds he's given you, you give them another at least 100 pounds on top of that. And then, you know, so the reality is if you have the absolute conviction that is Allah that gave you everything that you have in blessing, then when you spend it, you know that you've just been blessed to use what Allah has given you in a way that's pleasing to him. And that ability itself is a blessing. And the recognition of it as a blessing is a blessing. And Allah knows best. I hope that's answered your question. Uh, yes, it has. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Bolatito Bello, if you don't mind unmuting yourself. Yeah, I do not. Um, so, Malikum. so I think this is the question on entitlement. I know someone has asked this question before, but I think I'm going to be going from the angle of when it seems like a threat to you. So, let's say you are consistent with a particular act of um, generosity or worship. And maybe for some reasons you cannot do such acts again, and then p the people you are giving it to start to maybe like, um, I mean, just threatening you in a soft way. I mean, like maybe verbally or start acting some some weird ways. How do you handle situations like that? So, you know, the first thing you said is, "Land, you are you said to Allah, you are giving them because of Allah." Regardless of what they do, you are given it because of Allah. Allah has now tested you by them reacting to you when you've withheld from them, right? Reacting to you in a way that shows ingratitude. I always like to ask myself, do I do that with Allah sometimes? Sometimes when Allah doesn't give me what I want, knowing that that thing that I've asked for is bad for me. Do I show any ingratitude? Do I actually thank him for withholding what would have harmed me? Right? Do I actually thank him for that? Right? So when you recognize how much ingratitude you show to Allah, or how much you don't truly thank him for everything that he does for you, you can start to look at other servants of Allah with that same eye of mercy and saying that God did not destroy me when I used his blessing to sin. Speech is a blessing. Go to any deaf school, 
And all of them, they will have at least one wish to be able to speak. Okay? So sometimes that blessing of speech that Allah has given you, do you always use it to say what is right? Or sometimes you use that blessing of speech and say things that are haram, swear, abuse, or backbite, or, 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 or not even, let's say you're not even doing bad things, but you're not thanking Allah for it regularly, every moment. Right? So when you recognize that you are like that with Allah, then, and Allah doesn't destroy you, He still continues to give you. He didn't take away the speech from you when last you said something on, on you know, something unworthy. Yet to continue to bestow on you. Then, show excellence as Allah keeps on showing excellence to you. Right? This is the target. This is where we should be. Look at Abu Bakr, the person he was giving money to spread the worst rumors about his own daughter, the wife of the Prophet ﷺ. Think about this. This is one of the proofs that the Prophet Muhammad is true and the Quran is true. If someone is spreading rumors about your wife or your husband, I want all of you in this call, what do you guys think you want to happen to the person that you know is guilty of spreading rumors? You want proper, proper punishment for the person, wouldn't you? Yet the Prophet Muhammad when Allah revealed this verse to him, he didn't hide it. He didn't say, ah, let's leave this one. No, he recited it to Abu Bakr. And that led to the person who slandered his own wife being forgiven. Right? So what you're saying, we have the example in Abu Bakr. And Allah revealed the verse, says, look, Forgive and bear. Do you not like Allah to forgive you too? Right? So forgive and bear. Do you not like Allah to forgive you too? Is the answer. And Allah knows best. Alhamdulillah, thank you. I want to be very conscious of Imam's time. So I think there's there's one more question. There are two questions in the chat. Yeah, Jibril, my namesake. Yes. So the, okay. Oh, we have to hear from Sheikh Jibril. Yeah, no, Jibril after him, and then there are two questions in the chat, and I think, you know, okay. we can close the session. Uh, inshallah. Nah. Listen. Okay, Sheikh Jibril, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Jazakallah khayyad for the... Uh, okay. um, so, I, I want to... Um, ask in this way if you is it wrong to take priority or just in this in the sense of you having to uh, appreciate Allah for what he has done and you intend to also do so that call in that regard is it wrong for you to to take priority because probably the channel you are using the you don't feel that they are using it well, or you also have a thought that uh, the, your, the, the soda call could go to some set of people that would um, be more useful or be more beneficial to them. Is it wrong for you also to, to plan your soda call in that direction? Or you just give as no. you just, just give to them? Um, the, the ideal situation is to make giving a habit. So thank you for your question. The ideal situation is you make giving a habit such that, you know, look, I asked you, look, you know, Allah gives to people that he knows that are rich, doesn't he? Right? That's a, that Allah is our Lord, you know, and there's no better example for us, you know, than what Allah himself, that he gives to people that are rich, he gives people that are poor, he gives to people that he knows that they're going to sometimes waste the money. You know, Allah gives to all of us. Okay? So we should primarily make giving a habit. That's the first thing. The second thing is, of course, if you feel there is a greater need in a certain place than another place, of course it's okay to put direct your money or redirect your money in a place where there's a greater need. That's fine. You know, that's not a sin because you're still giving. Okay, so that's fine, inshallah. 
Okay. Any other? What was the? Okay. So the next question, yes. um, which is better, um, which is better, paying back a favor to the person that gave you something as a show of gratitude, or pay it forward to another person? Um, Allah knows best. Allah will judge this with the, regarding your intention, right? If you pay it forward to another person, I, I think generally speaking is who is in greater need, right? And Allah knows best. This, you know, as long as you are showing gratitude anyway and you're given, both are fine. And I think based on the sincerity of each action is how will be what, what will be greater in the sight of Allah. It's a, you know, Allah is the one that would see and, and and judge this. It's for me, I don't have that that criterion of saying this is better than this, and Allah knows best. Um, the next one, I understand from your response that the most times the feeling of pride and arrogance that follows charity is as a result of the disease of the heart. How can one attain tazkiyah? Oh God, that is the whole topic itself. Um, are there like specific processes to go through courses to take as a step towards cleansing the heart? Yes. Um, one, you learn and you have to know all of the diseases of the heart and the symptoms. Okay. Um, you know, knowing the disease of the heart and the symptoms is something that's compulsory upon every adult saying Muslim. Why? Because Allah says in the Quran, on the day on a day when neither on a day when neither wealth nor children will benefit anyone, illa man salim, except the one who comes to Allah with a sound heart. So when you recognize that having a sound heart is a prerequisite for being you know for for success on the day of judgment then you have to know how to get a sound heart and you have to aim and strive to get a sound heart but the the, the key thing to note is this is something which every muslim has to learn right you know if you if, i think if you look at some talks by hamza yusuf on purification of the heart you'll find some talks on that series which you can find and sit down and learn make notes learn and these are the kind of things that you learn for yourself to diagnose your own heart and to treat your own heart okay um so yeah that's that's how to do you need to sit down with a teacher ideally if you don't have a teacher then I, that, that resource that i mentioned is something that's good um learn the diseases of the heart if you can find a teacher that can take you through the science the the section on the disease of the heart that's the most elaborate on this on this topic basically and you'll be able to then go into depth into what are the symptoms of these diseases and what are the cures of these diseases. And then you roll up your sleeves and say, God help. Uh, you, you know, you have a lifetime of trying to fight and battle these diseases. And Allah knows best. Thank you so okay, much. I think that's uh, done with the questions. Yes, Latifa had one announcement to make and then we can do a closing dua, inshallah. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you so, so much. Um, okay, let me address the comment that we got. Um, well, inshallah, this actually, this session was recorded. So we'll inshallah upload and share the link. We already shared the link for last week's session to everyone. I also dropped the link to our YouTube page in the chat box. So you can please like, subscribe and share the last session and every other one had in the past. But we'll inshallah upload this very soon and also share the link. I had a couple of announcements to make. Um, the first one is that we would have a we'll have another um, Ramadan reflection series tomorrow with Imam Ahmad Khalil, is member of the Muslim Association of Canada, and we'll inshallah be talking about the seven goals of Ramadan. Also, next Saturday we'll be having Imam Bashir Abola take us on the topic forgiveness. Um, next Sunday, we'll have a zakat series with Mrs. Toyin Kikire Fung. Um, we'll have another Ramadan reflection series on the 15th. The topic is dealing with doubt. And then the last Sunday of Ramadan, we'll be having a physical tafsir and iftar after with Imam Najim Jimo. And the topic will be parents as pathways to paradise. We'll inshallah share the link to the Google form for registration. Um, the other one is would like that we all follow our social media pages, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, MailChimp, and then you can also drop your personal WhatsApp contacts in the chat box so that we can add you to the WhatsApp group. We inshallah promise to not spam you and we'll only want to share um, reminders and beneficial content and also um, notices about our physical and online sessions. Um, you can also, um, you can also, 
see the contents that we push out on social media on instagram and twitter when you follow us at the tara collective and we also wanted us to know that we do um weekly quizzes where you win a gift of iftar mondays to fridays you can also catch that on our youtube on our instagram pages on twitter and if you're also part of the whatsapp group um we're also doing a video project right now um with collaboration in collaboration with another um, Islamic organization and we shall have the goal to raise nine million naira to provide sahur and iftar for fasting Muslims um, I'll share the details okay I'll share the details in the chat box if you're interested in donating please donate generously to this account you can also share with family and friends um, we also have our zakat um, project for this year the tara collective is eligible to receive zakat and our target this year is 70 million naira please pay your zakat to help continue to provide medical and healthcare interventions across our existing communities this amount to also provide education and mentorship support and it will also help to provide livelihood and business support we'll definitely share um account details in the chat box or if you follow us on our instagram pages on twitter and also if you're part of the whatsapp um group you see the details to all of this this is all the announcement that i have jazakallah karen sir thank you so much for always coming to give us this amazing talks we thoroughly enjoyed it um i'm done with all the announcements i guess if we don't have any questions we can just take the closing dua and call it a day thank you so much sir thank you Deji. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم من نفخ ونفث وهمز بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيد السادات طيل القيرات سيد الأولين والآخرين إمام الأولياء والمتقين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك تتواب الرحيم واغفر لنا ولوالدنا ولمشايخنا ولأولادنا ولأزواجنا ولطلابنا والأحبابنا ولمعلمينا ولمن أحسن إلينا ومن أحسن ولمن أحسن الظن بنا ولمن طلب من الدعاء وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الحياء منهم والموات برحمتك مجيب الدعوات اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه وعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك ولا تجعلنا يا مولانا من الغافلين اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها وأنت مولاها اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو فبون تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا كريم وصلى الله على سيد محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين امين again thank you again on behalf of our community on behalf of the organization and again we can't stress enough how grateful we are for your teach for for the teachings of the quran that you give to us and may allah reward all your efforts again اللهم امين Thank you all for joining um, and see you tomorrow, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, Diggy. Salam alaikum, everyone. Bye.